Okay. Um, the Zoning Board of Deerfield is going to call this meeting to order. Can I just get a show of hands of how many folks are here for the Atlantic uh, Atlantic um, Warehouse and how many are here? And how many are here for the bed and breakfast? Okay, I'm gonna, uh, we have them both listed for 7 p.m. And so we're gonna take the Atlantic furniture first uh, and uh, we'll go from there, okay? So with that said, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals of Town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing January 21st at 7 p.m. in room 107 at the town offices, 8 Conway Street. South Deerfield, Mass, uh, on the application Atlantic Furniture, 10 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, for a special permit to use uh, 5 Industrial Drive West for wholesale warehouse and distribution. Um, with that, what we'll do is we'll just hear from the petitioners, and then what we'll do is we'll have um, a public comment, and then we'll, we'll deliberate and we'll make a decision. So... Uh, just also please state your name so that the we can have it for record. Okay, with that, I'll let you tell us what you want to do. Okay, my name is Jim Pittateri with Atlantic Furniture. Um, we purchased the building with the intent to have a warehousing and shipping operation there. Um, it's just about that simple. Although it's not a simple warehousing and shipping operation, it's you know just one big box, a lot of storage, and... Uh, product comes in one door we reprocess it a little bit by way of putting boxes around it that will secure it for shipping label it and send it out the other doors any any chance of retail there or no we've not discussed anything like that at all okay <clears throat> um any are you going to co uh coexist at all with anybody are you going to rent out extra space yeah we haven't talked about that in that location, although the location that we'd be vacating, it's perfect for leasable space, the way the buildings are separated. So there has been some discussion about leasing sections of that. Okay. Anybody on the board have any questions? Do, do, do you know where this is? <coughs> this, this is the big, what we used to call the old Miller's Falls tools, which became rule tools. Uh, it's right there off of 116. Linda, are you familiar where that is? Okay. Any any questions? What we're doing here, we're we're actually granting we'd be granting them a special permit for the use. Uh, any questions regarding um, traffic as far as um, trucking? Um, not familiar with the business so i don't know how how busy it is it's uh it's not really that busy compared to i think what else is going on around it um we generally have one maybe two containers in the morning which is the incoming um 7 30 in the morning they just back up to the dock and my staff unloads it okay so they drop and go drop and go in the evening between three and five is the usual pickup of the goods so it's, you know, the common carriers will come, grab a few pallets, uh, FedEx ground, UPS ground. Okay. So it's Probably. more like a shipping, just shipping. Just shipping. In and out. In and out, yeah. Would it be fair to say that it's much less detrimental than even when Rule was there or Miller's Falls? Oh. How many employees, uh, Mr. Pittateri? Um The shipping staff is nine people plus me. Versus uh, a couple hundred. Yeah. I'm Paul Shank. I'm the chairman of Dedic Industrial Park. So I'm glad to have him. I worked in the building for three years, and uh, so it's suited for. It's got the space that they really need. And it is. It is a day shift. Day shift operation. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And then I'll open it up. Go ahead, Mr. Kalshevsky. I want to make a comment. That <coughs> recently rezoned that area. Warehousing with a special permit required, okay, which to me this is a very good usage. The only thing I would ask the zoning board to do with the special permit is make sure that if there's any change of use of this from the furniture business to something else, they have to come back again, remind them that he has to come back again for a change of use. The second thing I would like to see you discuss is 
any storage of any, prohibit any storage of any hazardous waste or things like that in the future, okay, without coming back to the ZBA for clarification. That's it. You're not refinishing furniture or anything? You're no, strictly repackaging. Repackaging, yeah. And that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah, uh, yeah, not a problem at all. I'm, I'm specifically talking if in the future, if somebody wants to store oil drums or something in there and disappear on you, we, we don't want to become liable for it. Sure they don't either. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Have, yeah. <laughs> okay, so anybody want to make a motion? Sure, I make a motion uh, to give Atlantic Furniture Inc. their special permit with two um, addendum that they must come back for a change of use if there's going to be a change of use and um, second that um, I don't know how you want to phrase the second prohibit storage. prohibit uh, hazardous waste storage prohibit hazardous waste storage there it is waste storage I have a second. Second. All right. Let me. Just, any any public comment? Stoshesky, you already gave us. There's. Okay. Great. All right. With that, we'll go to a vote. Mr. Decker. I'm not voting. Okay. Linda. In favor. All right. Chris. Aye. Jamie. Aye. Aye. Ben. And and I also uh, five. Now you're just going to go through the process of the little wait, waiting period. We can. We'll just sign that. Do we have do we have a, a sign vote up? sheet? I we'll just have this attendance one. Mm -hmm. All right, you're all, all set. Right. Thank you very much. All we gotta do is sign the stuff and get it moving. Thank you. Hey. Okay, we'll move on to the next case. Um, if the petitioners could come up here, that would be wonderful. The Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing on January 21st at 7 p.m. in room 107 at the town offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, uh, on the application of Fleet Mall and Kate Crisp of 98 Columbia Ave, Cranston, Rhode Island, for a special permit to operate a bed and breakfast and a special permit to operate a meditation center at 595B River Road, Deerfield, Mass. With that, uh, we'll let you start to tell us a little bit about this, and then we'll go from there. And we'll use the same process we used before. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, I'm Fleet Mall. My, uh, my potential co-buyer of the property, Kate Crisp, uh, couldn't be with us tonight. We we luckily found out about this just yesterday. Somehow we missed the notification. Anyway, she had an obligation. She couldn't be here tonight. But this is Sophie Leger. She's my significant other, my partner. And uh, so uh, we uh, would like to have a permit to uh, have a, just a small, simple B&B operation, similar to what the current owners, uh, Bela's B&B, have been doing. 
uh, just a little, uh, you know, we think it's a good place to periodically have some guests and have them enjoy the meditative environment that we plan on creating there, a natural environment, and, and uh, some supplemental income for us. Uh, Sophie's mother uh, runs a wonderful B&B across the border up in Canada, uh, and um, um, it's a similar, very small, one or two guests and wonderful cooking kind of thing. So, so we would just like to continue that usage that the current owners have and, and be able to uh, have B&B guests like that. Um, uh, it's not going to be the, our main occupation, but we'd like to, to be able to do that. Any, if you have any questions about that or before you want me to talk about the meditation center, I know there are two separate requests. Yeah, I, I think that would be a good idea. I think we could uh, we'll handle them both separately. It would be wonderful. So uh, the, the first question I would have is what I kind of heard you saying, you're in the, you're in the uh, process of buying 595 uh, River Road? Yes, 595B River Road. Okay. And the current owners are here. Okay. And you have purchase and sales and all that kind of stuff? Or? Uh, we had inspections are Tuesday, and after that we'd move into purchase and sale. Okay. And you will live on the residence? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? And there's already a special permit for a bed and breakfast at this property? Yes. It's already. The, the owner who operates it is there, if you'd like her to speak. Okay. So um, signs, lighting, parking, I'm assuming, have already been taken care of. Number so. of rooms. Would it, would it be basically identical? To what the it's business is identical there. to what's happening now. Yeah, and they have Same plenty of rooms. Yeah, they, yeah, they have plenty of parking, and they, and they have a small sign down by the road, and mm -hmm. be. And nothing's going to change with the no, sign. No, I mean we might change the name on the sign. Well, the name, right, right. <laughs> but but there's sign. That, there's you we know. won't call it Bayless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would, so you would just keep everything that what we would call the same footprint. Yes. Same size signs and same. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and num as, as Chris said, number of rooms, how many rooms are, are going to potentially be rented out? You know, two or three. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm assuming they're on septic and you're gonna, that's, a, that's a Board of Health thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've got to specify <coughs> Yeah. It can't be two or three. It's okay, three well, three. yeah. Um, what is the current permit? It would, two, two would be fine for us. I guess if we need to do more than that, we can come back to you or something, but two would be fine. I think that that would be the right thing to do, recommend, uh, start with the two, and if you yeah. wanted to come back and amend your permit or something, right. come back and increase it to three. Right. I, I'm sure there's regulations that the Board of Health is going to watch. Well, there's regulation you already mentioned. <coughs> it's going to be, be owner-occupied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, both, both the owners will be there. Kate Crisp will also live there. I don't see any other issues from the Board of Health Building Inspector issue for that that particular function. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to ask for public input. <coughs> All right, anybody in the public like to speak in favor? Steve Anderson, uh, we went to the north and uh, we are in favor of this petition. Okay. Any opposition? Okay. Any other questions from the board? Do we want to talk as a board? We'll talk for a minute. Okay. Okay. So um, again, uh, we're going to take these two. There are two separate items here. One is for a bed and breakfast, and then the other one for a meditation center at the same piece of property. Um, so we'll talk about the bed and breakfast. Uh, anybody have any comments? Uh, have there been any issues that we've heard about over the past? It's only been probably two years, I think, since or so, since we did the special permit, but I haven't heard anything negative at all. Mm -hmm. no, I haven't I haven't had any, there hasn't been any op opposition to it at all or anything like that. Um, and the other stuff, like I said, would be up to the building officials. Uh, we have bed and breakfasts 
And there's a new one across the road or somewhere right in that area. There's another one. Um, bed and breakfasts tend to come and go. Mm -hmm. Some some sustain and <laughs> some don't. Some people get a special permit and then they sell it. <laughs> then they sell the property. <laughs> I really don't have any big problem with the bed and breakfast. No. So, and with that said, if that's the case, anybody want to make a motion? Yeah, do we need to consider any restrictions or? Well, the restrictions that we should have on there, just like any, is that it has to be owner occupied. Mm -hmm. uh, the bed and breakfast has to be owner occupied. In two rooms. Uh, now. In, in two rooms. The reason to be in that is once, if you're not owner occupying, then you're, you're a hotel. Yeah, got it. You're not a bed and breakfast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we're definitely very much going to be living there. Right. I'd like to make a motion that we grant the special permit to operate a bed and breakfast with the understanding that it will be limited to two rooms and it will be owner occupied. I second that. Great. Are you voting this time, Robert? You've got five there. Okay. Five. Linda, I can't right. vote. Okay. I, I thought yes. maybe we'd want to be nice to you. <laughs> but I can't vote because you've got five regular members. Yes, I'm in yes. favor of it. Chris? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Ben? Yes. I also vote in favor of the bed and breakfast. Okay? Right. Thank you. So the bed and breakfast is a done deal. <clears throat> Thank you. Now we'll move to the uh, a, to a special permit to operate a meditation center at uh, 595 River Road, at, uh, Deerfield, Mass. Same piece of property. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the meditation center. What does it mean? How many people? How frequently? Right. Absolutely. All that kind of stuff. Well, it's about the most peaceful thing you could imagine, mm -hmm. people sitting and meditating, sitting quietly. So uh, I've been a meditation practitioner and teacher for over 40 years, and I'm a senior teacher in two different uh, Buddhist traditions, and I'm also a teacher of secular mindfulness. I'm a, I have a business management consulting practice, and and uh, I, you know, I bring mindfulness-based programming, which is kind of the secular or non-sectarian form of meditation, to corporations, to healthcare, uh, you know, training clinicians, psychotherapists, uh, people that uh, work in uh, mental health and homeless shelters. I basically am really involved in training professionals in mindfulness-based emotional intelligence, in mindfulness-based wellness and resiliency, that kind of thing. And uh, so. Uh, as you may know, this property has a kind of large meditation hall there, which the current owners have been using uh, for some similar type of classes. And uh, uh, so, you know, we would be, uh, we probably have some local classes, uh, maybe a couple evenings a week, have a yoga class, have a meditation class. Maybe my uh, partner Sophie here is a Qigong teacher, uh, similar to Tai Chi. Uh, my <coughs> the, other, the other owner, Kate Crisp, is a certified yoga teacher. So, you know, we might have uh, two or three classes a week like that, evening classes, but uh, then we might offer uh, some weekend programs. And in terms of the, the training work that I do, uh, for example, I work with a lot of CEOs, so I might have five CEOs come in and put them up at some of the local hotels around the Hampton Inn or wherever, some of the B&Bs, and have them there for five days of intensive training, something like that, uh, using that space. Um, so it's basically training in... Uh, mindfulness meditation and emotional intelligence skills and it's all done uh you know it's pretty quiet activity very really peaceful quiet kind of workshop uh environment and uh and the kind of people the clientele that are interested in that kind of thing tend to be very conscientious very professional and uh, ecologically minded people right so uh, meditation center in, in my experience anyway is a very very low impact uh, uh, kind of situation and that's certainly what we want. I mean, we're um, uh, our whole kind of raison de terre in life is about peacemaking and um, and uh, giving people skills to be uh, uh, manage conflict and improve their own personal health and uh, be more community focused and so forth. And so um, that's what we'd like to do. So, what might be the maximum number of people? Well, I don't know what the, you know, the, the facility there, you could, you could easily do some classes for up to 40, 40 50 people. Uh, um, I think most of the classes would be considerably smaller than that. I think if we were going to do a bigger program and people were coming in from out of state or something, uh, we'd have them staying in a local hotels and probably do it, get a shuttle, have a shuttle van go around, pick everybody up to, to minimize that. 
you know, if there are local classes, we, you know, have people coming in from the community for a yoga class or something. But again, I don't, I think those classes would tend to be anywhere from five to 15 uh, people or something. And, you know, I think that's, that's kind of what's been going on there already. And I, and I don't think it's been a problem for the neighbors. And, and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the property, but you come off River Road and you go, you go, uh, you go through and up and around and up a hill. So the property itself and where the actual building is pretty isolated, uh, pretty, pretty far from everything else. And, uh, and again, this is just quiet, meditative activity, so. No primal screen? No, no primal <laughs> screen. <laughs> Reverberating across the country. <laughs> no. Although the place is isolated enough, you're probably good to do primal screen there, anyway. but that's not our thing. <laughs> So you, you would foresee 40 to 50 as the absolute maximum at any time? I would think so. You know, I mean, uh, the space, I don't know. It would be, depend on what, you know, you all said and what, what the neighbors were happy with. I mean, we don't really intend to use it as a rental, but, you know, um, I mean, the space, if you put chairs in, it's big enough to have 60, 70 people in there for some kind of event or a lecture <coughs> or something. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we were ever going to do something like that, we'd want to, you know, put a word out to the neighbors and make sure everybody was okay with it, make sure we had people helping to direct traffic and signs and make sure it was done in a very careful way so it didn't impact the neighborhood. But, but that would be a rare thing. I think it, mostly it's going to be smaller classes and smaller retreats. What, what's the capacity for parking there? That's pretty big. What would you say, Bela? We have a very large parking lot. We have a lot of parking way up on the hill there. Uh, I know I had my 60th birthday there and I had 60 people there. <laughs> so, you know, cars can park up there. That was not a, that was just a personal party, but um, you can park quite a few cars up there without bothering any neighbors. And what they're doing seems like a natural extension of what we've been doing and we've never had any problems with any of our than anything. Because we take class, small classes, and once in a while, something a little different, but not much. Oh, um, any other questions? I don't have any. So, I, before I make any comments, okay, Robert. Although I'm not going to participate in the decision um, because <coughs> you, you all are here, um, I think I want to caution you that it doesn't become a function hall and that it stay on the meditation task it, that is mentioned so did you all of a sudden don't have it for wedding receptions or, or or anything else which is a lot different than a meditation center yeah okay. that's my only point yeah we have no intention of doing that but we're not going to run a wedding business well, my suggestion is that if the, they choose to give you the permit that they restrict it to what you asked for <laughs> mm -hmm. any more questions Linda yeah I'm just asking the public, and then I got I got a couple of comments, and when we can deliberate. So, the public, uh, any comments in favor or in opposition? I would be, oh, I would be very in favor. It's a very nice use, and bringing wonderful people and a little bit of you know activity to our to Deerfield. That's incredibly positive. That's my feeling about it, and I wouldn't put any restrictions on it given what they want. But that's my personal. My personal feeling. I feel like sometimes we want to you know, put too many restrictions on these. They're not going to do wedding parties. I've had a lot of people ask me about that, and I've said, mm. that's not what I want to do. How about you folks? Do you have any comments? Uh, just to say that we're, uh, my wife and I, are, as a Bible student with her, are totally in favor of this. We think it's a great thing. Okay. Good. I'll, I'll go. You can wait a minute. <coughs> okay. So we're gonna, all right, so now we got the public comment, we're gonna deliberate a little bit and, and, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> one of the things, first of all, I admire exactly what you do, and I admire your comments and so forth. Uh, the only thing I can tell you, uh, and I'm gonna sound like crazy, but I've been on the board since 1980 and I've lived through a lot of those trust me's and, and we've been burned in the past, so that's why we try to do the best we can to protect the town. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's a couple things here. I, 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 I like the idea. I think it's wonderful and all that kind of stuff. But I wonder where we're getting on the line of an assembly hall, an, an, an institution slash education, and or uh, home business that the select board has to, 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 to 
to vote on here. So I'm not sure. I'm going to ask Mr. Kalashevsky in a minute. But those are a couple of things that pop in my mind. Because um, once you get over a certain part, you got, you got what we call the assembly hall. Uh, and then the fire protection kicks in and that kind of stuff. And then you have, and then we end up with things that possibly can become, uh, if you're teaching a lot of classes, does it become an, ed an educational institution type of thing? And, and so there's a, for me, there's a little bit unknown of where does this fall? The bed and breakfast was easy. Um, it was an easy one because that we've dealt with that a hundred times. Um, mm -hmm. So um, with that, I'm going to just ask Mr. Kalachewski, you got any comments to that? To that? Yeah, you're, you're 100 percent right, Ron. What <coughs> is going to be required by code, no choice, is an inspection from the fire department. Not have previously known that up to 50 people could be there. It's going to require you know Deerfield Fire Department to go through check for alarm system, uh, smoke detectors, et cetera, et cetera. Also, egress in the doors, whether or not 50 people can egress through the egresses they have. Uh, so there is some follow-up. Granted, if you grant choose to grant the permit, it can't be issued until that fire inspection is followed through with, okay? And we're on the fringe just as you pointed out, we're on the fringe that uh, it's possible that the fire department could ask that that be sprinkler in the event that you grant a permit because permits are granted for occupancy by square footage, not by somebody saying there's 10 people going to be there. And for example, this room here is good for about well, 300 people. I would put 300 people in here, but but we you, you have to you have to take those in consideration. Yeah, so you would issue based on an occupancy load. You would say that this I building issue, this building could hold 20, 50, 70. That's correct. In other words, you go there, you look at the <coughs> here's the maximum number of people that can be in that room. Okay, uh, I've been in the room. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I can't say either way whether it's good for 50 or not, okay? But it definitely has to have uh, inspection by the local fire department for the rest of it, so. What about the, the select board in a, as far as a home business uh, versus? You, you can refer back to the home business, but I, I think the reason they're here is special permit because of the bed and breakfast. And this is part of the bed and breakfast, so uh, I think you absolutely have the authority to issue this. Dick, would the um, uh, fire department um, issue a finding on yes, the, the, like yeah. the maximum yeah. quantity? Of yeah, I would, I would call the fire chief and say, okay, go in here. Uh, one example: you have fire extinguishers in the room. Okay, there's any room that's occupied for that assembly type usage would require a couple of fire extinguishers, for example. The fire department's gonna come through and say, you need two of those little fire extinguishers hung on the wall, okay? You're, you're missing a smoke detector or a carbon monoxide detector, whatever it may be. You need another one of those. And we're restricting your capacity of this because of the doors, the exit doors, okay? For example, how many doors exit to the outside from that room? From that room, yeah. they go directly outside. There's, one, there's two main doors that open to the porch, and there's another door in the back. Okay, so it probably the would meet doors. the it probably would meet the standards. How about ADA accessibility? Same thing. So all this has to be taken, and I'm fortunate that you know there wasn't. So I'm wondering what I'm wondering, and then I'm just throwing this out. Are you kind of you? You, did you think about this stuff or not? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm familiar with this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I just, and I don't know whether there's a threshold over which that becomes more necessary than not, or whether I couldn't, if you said the, the permit actually permits the space, it doesn't restrict the number of people, I'm not sure. But anyway, we're going to be starting off very low key here, you know, there's nothing in, <coughs> we could always uh, come back if there was any change of use. But we certainly want to be compliant. And, hey, if we weren't required to, we're going to have fire extinguishers in there. I've been involved in, lots of different things over, over my life, and we've been part of other 
we, we go visit lots of retreat centers to do meditation programs our own for ourselves, you know, and so we would certainly want to be compliant uh, with anything, with, uh, with the fire department, anything like that. We, we definitely, uh, absolutely, so. And you know that, you know, a lot of this fire stuff is a big effect from the Rhode Island nightclub fire there. That's exactly where it came from. Driven so much, uh, right. cr and I don't want to say craziness, but they've driven this right. to the nth degree. That's really a shame. Because uh, it really impacts a lot, a lot of people that sometimes it shouldn't have to impact, but it does. Yeah, I mean, I, I would be regretful if, if we had to have sprinklers just because it takes away from the beauty of the place a little bit, and it would be expensive. But if we had to do it, we'd have to do it. But certainly putting in, making sure the egress is proper. And I just brought that up is that because once you reach a certain threshold, yeah, they're required no matter what it is. Yeah, but yeah. I don't, I, I doubt if it's required. No. But I know the fire extinguisher would be a requirement, and. Uh, I don't remember stairs, for example. Uh, uh, probably would have. I, 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 I can't just can't picture it, but there could be a, a, a handicapped accessibility issue mm -hmm. that would be required. To, well, one uh, of the things we'd like to. I don't know if you're familiar with, but on the front end of that, it has its own entrance separate from the house, right? And there's kind of like a. There's, there's, two, there's these big double doors that open you can go right into, and then there's another door that goes into kind of a mud room, right? I have the porch picture in the side of the thing. Yeah. And, and the doors. Anyway, we, we would like to expand that a little bit, not, not increasing the footprint of the overall structure much, but just make that, right now that mud room, or whatever, I don't know what you call it, entry hall, mud room. Except on the porch. porch. It, it, it only covers about one third of the front end of that building. We would want to expand it a little bit, and in a process of doing that, create a handicap accessible uh, uh, entrance and egress, and uh, we would be planning on doing something like that anyway. And there's only one other subject I need to address. It switches over to the Board of Health. How many bathrooms, <coughs> bathrooms do you have in the house? So. Where, where I'm kind of at is I don't know, I'm being honest right. with you, I don't know where to go with this, and I didn't know if you might, uh, if, if we should defer you back to the building commissioner for you to work some of these uh, details out so that if, if and when we granted you a, a permit that we could have more um, things designated in the permit, like, you know, the function, the number of people, you know, the number of cars and that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I, could, I can organize the fire department to do an inspection on that within a week. That wouldn't be a problem getting hold of Chet going through there next week, uh, coming up with a list. So uh, that's up to whatever decision you guys want to make. Of what they would need? What anything they need to change or alter? If they want, if. Maybe nothing. I, I, so so would, we continue the, <coughs> would we continue the hearing? Um, um, you know, I know I, I'm looking for other guidance if right. anybody else has any guidance. Continue for a couple of weeks with your recommendation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's up to you if you want to But continue. I'm not participating. <laughs> I know you're in the middle of buying this. When are you, are you, I mean, are you spending a lot of time still in Rhode Island, or are you? Uh, we're, uh, um, no, we're, uh, as I said, the inspections on their property, or Tuesday, we had inspections on our property uh, yesterday, and it's under contract. So when will you maybe the closing, be? closing, yeah. uh, the actual closing uh, is towards the end of March. Oh, oh so it's a ways away. Yeah. Okay. Well, we kind of need to, you know, part of purchasing this property, we need to know we're going to be able to do what we're buying it to oh, do it with, oh, right? Okay. And then, and we're right in the process of making that decision on both ends, and we're not kind of where the, we, we're fortunately things worked out where we had the ability to, uh, you know, we're not wealthy enough that we can uh, buy a house while we're waiting to sell our house, right? right. We have to <laughs> we have to sell our house to be able to buy this house and make the down payment. And fortunately, it's it's miraculously worked out timing wise, uh, but we kind of need to know what we're doing here pretty quickly. My and we'd be happy to accept any, you know, kind of uh, well, subject to or, you know, something. We certainly want to honor whatever the building inspector wants us to do. So if we sent you away for a couple of weeks, what's that going to do to you? Uh, I don't know. It's going to make it a little difficult to move forward with financing and purchase right. and sale. I, mean, I, I could make a suggestion that if, you, if you're considering granting a permit, you can grant it subject to them passing building code and fire. Well, let me let, let me let me even let me. <laughs> I, I shouldn't be giving this advice, but um, 
I'll put myself in your shoes and I'm buying that piece of property. Mm -hmm. I would want to know what my, what's my impact. And when I say my impact, yeah, we grant you a permit. And then Dick comes and says, you got to put $100,000 into that property before you can use it. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, be, I'd want to know those answers before I could, before I'd before I buy it. Or you can buy it at your own risk. I mean, right. well, I'm talking to myself yeah. personally, so I'm not sure, and I'm not comfortable, I'll be honest with you, I'm not comfortable just saying, I, I don't, I love your idea of the mediation center, and I love the, the, um, the professional training and all that stuff that I think is a great idea. It's just how much, how much of an impact is it gonna be to our community? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that's what we really need to understand. Right. And that, that's the only thing, because um, as, as the rules live there, and you live there and the folks live next door, there's people always moving. Um, we have houses in town here that uh, the f mother and father gave property to children behind. The children built the house and then the children split and left and then we, we have these things. So uh, we're, not, uh, we're not trying to be uh, uh, obstructive or any of that kind of stuff. We just have to kind of think the long range of, of what's right. happening. Well, in terms of our needs, uh, if, if what the uh, <coughs> uh, building inspector has suggested would be possible, uh, we know we're going to have to spend some money, you know. Um, um, and uh, what we need to know is if you're going to basically accept the concept, you know. So if you were able to do that subject to the building inspector and what they needed, uh, I, I have a pretty ballpark idea what it, what it could end up costing us as most, and we're prepared to do that. We just need to know if, if you all are going to uh, be okay with us having a meditation center, as we described there. Well, I, can, I, can, I can answer all those questions within one week, okay? Mm -hmm. So you don't have a closing for next week, correct? We don't have the closing. The thing is that we have to uh, we have to come to a purchase and sale agreement and get put financing in place. Well, and, uh, in one week, I can have your fire department building mm -hmm. inspection answer mm -hmm. of what's required and what's what would, what would be allowed and what would be required. Mm -hmm. That you can have that answer by next Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that affects anybody's decision. Similar, similar to let me put, put this way, similar to uh, the bed and breakfast, we have the ability to actually put a number on it, and then have you have to come back to amend it. Mm -hmm. we, we we could do we could do that, and yeah, you can do. and then you know um, then at least they, they they have something to start with, but um, and then they'd have to go work with you. I mean that's that's an option. Uh, so what, what about him giving you some number that you're comfortable with tonight, and, it, and then... How can we judge that number, though? And then postpone the final decision for a couple of weeks or something, or at least give him some idea that... that well, I would, I'd say we give him a number. I mean, he's, uh, he's told us he wants to start small. He's not starting out big. Okay. Um, but I do concur with whoever said it. Um, you know, I really hate to see all of a sudden, uh, you know, we're holding weddings on the property. And, you know, nothing against you. Don't, please don't take any of this. I understand that. But, uh, I mean, we're certainly, please. you could write up no weddings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we got, we got, a, we got a, an excellent wedding. catering service here in town. That, uh, <laughs> Hillside Pizza does a phenomenal job. And boom, you got there and you got small <coughs> events and all that kind of stuff. So we have to be careful of that. So I would, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be comfortable with, you know, uh, you know, something maybe like 12 is something like a number of 12 people or uh, something like that. I might be comfortable with something like that. And then if. All right. So it sort of seems like we'll probably put a lower number to be safe if we're going to vote on it tonight. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you want to wait, then we'll be happy to hear what the you know, fire department recommends, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And. And it was like someone wanted to say six people. I mean, you, it, it feels, uh, it's not going it, to, it feels like uh, it would be better to be a little more uh, open to what they're doing and, you know, maybe say 25 or 30 people at, at the max, because that's pretty, uh, for now, until, I don't know, it just, well, it seems funny to me, because we've had, you know, events there. Classes and once in a great while, you know, more than 
more than our 10 or 12 people. Yeah. Just so that you have a sense of the volume, we don't, um, I, I wouldn't, in terms of having a, some kind of multi-day retreat there, I wouldn't suspect that that would happen more than once or twice the rest of this year, you know, and we might do that four times a year the next year. So it'd be more like, more likely the weekly classes and stuff. But anyway, it's not, it's not going to be some sudden big thing. And in terms of impact on the area, I think one of the positive impacts is, is when we do do retreats uh, and people come in from out of town, they're going to be staying in the local hotels and bed and breakfasts and right in this area, the Greenfield, the highway exit there and so forth. So it is bringing some revenue and some, uh, some business to the area. Yeah, I think that those, those anomalies and those exceptions uh, are, one, are, are one thing. You know, where, what I say is, um, and just as the rules said, I don't know if we put a number on yours or not no. um, when we did whatever we did. Uh, but by putting a number on it, it also allows the town to have some teeth in the event that it gets too big. Now, mm -hmm. you have 12 coming this week and everything's fine, and all of a sudden you have 30 show up. We don't, and I don't want to say we don't know about it, and it's not impacting anybody, it doesn't become a problem. However, if we give you 30 and it's constant, then there's nothing we can do. And we, meaning the town, right. not we, the board. Mm -hmm. We, the town, have nothing that we can do. And as I said, neighbors <coughs> change and, uh, and things change. Yeah. Again, conceptually, I don't have any problems with it. But uh, I, I think, I think once, he, once you do the analysis of what the true uh, occupancy load is of the, of the building and the property, then, then if you'd like to come back and amend it, I think, that that's, uh, I think that's doable. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to see them get what they're looking for, Ron, on one hand. But on the other hand, I don't, I don't want to see a set of precedents by giving a number of 40 or 50, and a month from now somebody else falls in the door with some operation that we definitely don't want. And Where, where does the mediation center fall under the uh, use chart? It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not an assembly? I mean, it's a home business, right? The meditations. Yeah. I mean, it would be a home business, I would think. Well, I think it, it could fall under educational, could fall under home business, could, you know, could fall under a number of categories. I was trying to research that today, and I, I couldn't come up with a good answer. So, uh, Mr. Mull, does that sound reasonable, uh, 12 to start, or...? Uh, it's a little small. If we could go with a number that was a little bigger, is that something if we could start with 20, I'd be a lot happier with that. This seems like a little more reasonable, a little more given the size of the property. But, uh, but we could do that, and then we'll certainly would go, go ahead with having you do the inspection. And, and uh, once we get all that done, we'll, we'll come back to you and, and, and see if we need to want to change it or amend it. And, uh, you know, as we, whatever we do, we want to work with you and work with the town and make sure that we have an operation that you're comfortable with. And... Uh, how many acres are there? How many what? How many acres? 18 acres. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite isolated. Yeah. It's really a way back up in the mm -hmm. woods. It's not a neighborhood or noise yeah, issue. It's right over the road there, I know. Yeah, there's, only, there's one house that doesn't belong to that property that's on that private road. Other than that, there's nothing there. Again, the number you assign whatever it may be, is going to be subject to the fire to, to your, It's going to be, yeah, to your occupancy yeah. load. Right, yeah. I think it's an easy thing you know, if the fire chief, you know, comes in and says a number, that'll be an easy thing to, to amend, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just we don't know. <laughs> so it's kind of, oh, no. kind of hard to, you know, hold our hand on the Bible oh, and you know, <laughs> swear to something we don't know. I, I never expected him to say 40 or 50 people would be quite honest. And honestly, I don't think 18 or 20 is, is outrageous for the size of the place, but I... I'm, I mean, I, I'm looking for guidance. I mean, How big that room is? Is there any fee to amend? 40 by 60. How much? 40 by 60. 75 bucks. 2,400 square feet. It's as big as a basketball court. What's going to be in the room? Meditation cushions. Chairs. California rated? One seven, uh, are they California rated 117? Fire, fire rated? Yeah. Oh, you, you, know, you mean the meditation cushions? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, they'll be the same kind used That's in all these questions. Question. Yeah. Uh, Cal California 117, those chairs, like these chairs. Yeah. <laughs> no, we we'll operate everything to cook. Yeah. Uh, so you're 40 by 60, 
40 by 6, 24, 20, you're almost 3,000 square feet. It's 2,500 square feet. 2,500 square feet. Just one little calculation in my head here. Uh, you're good for about 300 and something people if it was just a They're standing. Okay. Right, if they're standing. Yeah. Yeah. And you're good for uh, 130-ish if there's chairs and tables. Mm -hmm. Just by the size of the room, okay? That automatically triggers doorways, 36-inch uh, doorway, for example, is good for, uh, I can't remember exactly, but then you have to add an inch for every five people, and that's how you calculate the doorways. And then it has to go, if you lose 50% of your exits, everybody has to be able to exit through that. And whatever. So, I mean, I have no problem with 20. I mean, I don't, I don't think 20 so, is an unreasonable number. I guess the 20 is not an unreasonable number for the size and what could happen there. Yeah. So, I agree with you. Right. But the understanding that they can always come back and mm. amend it once the fire department has if they want gone more. in. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. And well, I know it's going to come high. Now, we've gone through this. I know it's going to come out with a much higher number than 20, but I'd be comfortable with 20 at this until everything was in place. Yeah. So, um, as far as let's talk about signage and all, all that kind of stuff. Same. Are you, how are you going to advertise? Are you going to have some kind of other signage or something there? Uh, there in, in terms of there, the property would be a, a similar small sign, exactly like there is now. Okay. Nothing There's a definite there. sign restriction. You got that right. Code. Okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> uh, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm good with, uh, with 20 mm -hmm. uh, as a number. I mean, mm -hmm. okay. start and you want to come back and amend it. Back and I and think the it. only thing coming back to amend that would be to incorporate things, not just for the fire marsh, but also parking and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing where the weddings comes into it is not the number of people, it's the DJs and the, <laughs> you know, the, well, the that kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff that comes along with it. Something that you don't think about with meditation, certainly. Mm. All right. All right. Anybody want to make a motion? Your turn, Linda. Oh. Somebody's been writing <laughs> the notes down. <laughs> do it. It's a lot of notes on this one. Uh, I'm not going for it. <laughs> make a motion that we approve the, the bed and breakfast and um, function center for a maximum of 20 people at this point. Okay. So we're, oh, do, uh, do I have a second? I, I second that. All right. So the, what it's going to read is it's actually going to read uh, a special permit to operate a meditation center for uh, 20, 20, what, what would you call the folks that you call? Participants. 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 Mm -hmm. <clears throat> At 595 uh, River Road. Mm -hmm. All right. And then the only other thing I'd like to put on is just subject to all building and health codes. Mm-hmm. Building, uh, fire building codes. health fire codes. They're building health and fire codes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they be kept current. <laughs> All right. Oh. All right, we'll go to vote. Chris? Yes. Jamie? Aye. Yes. Ben? Aye. Linda? Aye. Not Robert? Not voting. And, <laughs> and I also aye. And I <coughs> Thank I you. I hope you have very good success. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. We're yes. looking forward to being here. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Good thank luck. You. Yes. Welcome. So, what's uh, how do we actually get the permits? You mail them to us, or we can? No. What uh, what will happen now is uh, all this will go into the um, into the uh, uh, building commissioner's office. They'll type it up. We'll sign it. And then there's generally a, a like a 20 day waiting period for anybody that would like to appeal oh, I see. or okay. something of that sort. It won't be filed so, now until Monday. So it'll be 20 days from Monday. Somebody could come in and appeal the decision if they don't like you or right. something. Okay, great. They don't need a reason. And mm -hmm. it's unlikely that would happen with that. Mm -hmm. I also don't think I've heard restrictions. I'm understand the process. Great. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, we got a little bit more business and stuff, so. Yeah. We got an executive session run, we have to turn the camera off. But oh, we'll go into the room too, if you want. That'd be we'll easier. Camera in there. Make sure yeah, we'll make sure it's off. Just unplug it.
we do that. Do you want to join us? Do you want to join us? Who's there? Who's there? We got to turn around and make sure that we include, we include you in motion on the board. <laughs> so I usually see her there, so <laughs> Greenfield oh. or Franklin County, whatever. <laughs> make a good pair. <laughs> no, I don't sign it because I didn't participate. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. But uh, they sued me last week the traditional public thing and I didn't even participate. Okay. So um, with uh, with that, um, <clears throat> we have some extra business to talk about. We're actually going to go into executive session. Uh, it's on the... Um, on the agenda yes. uh, that we're going to go into this executive session and um, discuss some uh, litigation. All right. You so have to declare it. Okay. I just did. I thought. No, no. You had to say that <coughs> we have a detrimental effect to the litigation position of the public body, and the chair so declares. Where do I see that here? That's number three. Towards number the three. The zoning board uh, may enter executive session allowed by MGL 3021 to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may be, uh, have detrimental effect on the litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. So the chair is declaring we're going to go talk no. in private about the next executive thing, session. next thing you have to do is a roll call and part of the motion you also need to uh, allow for Dick to participate. And so, what the, the roll call is? Chris, I'm here. <laughs> Jamie Hartwright. Yeah. Benjamin Wadham. Ron. Can you do this? Yes. Even. I mean, I still, wow. uh, Robert. And now, and like we'd like to, uh, I'd like to invite the um, invite the uh, building commissioner in with us. Um, I'd like to just go again through a roll call. Ben. Ben. Jamie. Chris. Ron. Yes, Ron. yes. No, yes. All right. Let's yep. go in there and see what we, we got. Now, you're supposed to also say whether we're going to go into open business when we come out because that's what we're supposed to do unless we're not going to come back in open mm -hmm. session. No, we're going to come back in open session and, just, and then we'll go from there. Okay. You all set, young man? I'm ready. Oh, the other guy in there. That's my bedtime. <laughs> okay. Uh, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals will come out of executive session at uh, 8, uh, 11 p.m. Um, with that, I'd like to just see if uh, anybody would like to make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. We have to have a roll call. Okay, we'll roll call. Okay, roll call, Ben. Uh, ben. <laughs> Jamie. Chris. Ron. Yes. Bob. Bob. And, okay, so. And I make a motion that we adjourn today's meeting. I second that. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Thank you both.